Hey guys, it's Jenny, and today I'm talking about my breast reduction. A lot of people didn't know that about five, it'll be five years this October, um, that I had a breast reduction when I was 19 years old. And I've talked about it on my Instagram recently, and I got a lot of questions wondering the experience, pros and cons, and like what recovery was like, the pre-op, post-op. So I'm gonna try to cover all of that. I have a whole folder of paperwork. I have my laptop over here, so I'm going to be looking over here a lot. Um, with all my notes, I have basically separated into pre-operation and then post-op, post-operation. And I'm just going to give you guys the lowdown on these boobies. <laughs> and I was a triple D in some stores. I went to some stores and I was an F or a G. Um, you know, anyone who knows bra sizes knows that there's no rules, you know, they just completely vary. It's hard because I have a small rib cage and a, I'm very petite, so having big boobs and a small rib cage, I couldn't find bras that had a small band size but big cups, so I used to buy bras at like Torrid or Lane Bryant, like a plus size store, because they had the cups that I could wear and I would have my mom cut the band and pull it over to make it smaller. So I literally basically had to make makeshift a bra that I could wear. I when I was 19, five years ago, they didn't make bralettes that were like for bigger boobs. That wasn't a thing. That's become a thing and I'm so glad. But like all I could buy was like cheetah print or black or beige or white and they were like $60. You couldn't just go into a Forever 21 and get like a cute little bralette. No, no. No, 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 that didn't exist. Where was I going with this? Um, and I'd always, always hated my boobs because people would tease me about them and make comments about them and I just, I felt so uncomfortable in my body. Like I would sleep with a bra on because I didn't like the way they just like flopped onto my stomach and they were hot and they were heavy and I love fashion and I love being able to just wear things like I'm wearing today. I could not have worn this five years ago. Was, they were just long and like heavy and it, oh, I just, I was very uncomfortable in my body for all of my life. And so when I was 19, a family friend of ours I, that knew, that had known me my whole life and knew that that was a difficult thing for me. So they offered to me to pay for me to get one and of course that's like a crazy thing to you know because you do research and you think about it so much and then someone's like hey i can give this to you and you're like i thought about it a lot because i was like oh i don't want to have scars i just want to be all natural i did a lot of my own research which i highly recommend um look up before and after pictures i did lots of google searching I tried to find people that had bodies like mine because, you know, some people have longer torsos. Some people were different weights, had different builds. And I tried to find people that kind of looked like me and had a similar before that I had so I could kind of envision what I wanted and the, what I didn't want. There were certain things about the way the end results of people were that I didn't love. And I would, I took those pictures and I showed them to my surgeon and I was like I see this in a lot of pictures and I don't want that and they were like okay we hear you we see it and I was like great I would look up people on YouTube I would look up blog blog posts I would just do as much of your own research before you even find a doctor or get there as you want because I just think it's important to like be your own advocate and know what you want also I would say look up uh, like unbiased testimonials like people that just blogs of people that are just personally talking about their experience and not like testimonials on like a plastic surgeon's website because to me I'm sure they're honest but also I think they're biased because of course they're not going to put the bad reviews on their website sorry if this video is like all over the place I, I have a lot of notes and they're not all in perfect order but I wanted to cover as many things as I could think of. So I'm just kind of I'm just kind of firing all over the place here. I made the decision. I had my surgery October 7th, a Tuesday, 8 a.m. So at the time I was working somewhere that I'm 
thank goodness, not currently working at. And I made the choice to not tell any of my coworkers. I only told maybe one or two of my close, close friends. And I didn't tell any of my like extended family. Like obviously my mom knew because I lived with her. It was such a deeply personal issue and decision. And I didn't want anyone's opinion. I didn't want anyone to psych me out and be like, why would you want to do that? Or, oh, I heard somebody had that done and this awful thing happened. And I was just, it, I was so scared to have anyone say something that would change my mind or make me not want to do it. I think it's important to know I've, ne I've never had had a surgery before. I'd never been under anesthesia. And so this was all like very new, very scary. And on top of it, I also have anxiety and Tourette, so it's like, you know, it's a lot. To, <laughs> it was a lot to deal with. I think if you don't want to tell anyone, only tell the people that would need to know. You know, like, who's going to drive you there? Who's going to pick you and up? She drove me here. From, you know, the surgery. It's nobody's business. It's your body. It's your choice. If you don't want to tell anyone, you don't have to, you know? If they're not paying for it, if they're not bringing you there from the surgery and taking you home... It's not, their, it's not their business, you know? You can tell people after it's done because then they can't psych you out about it because it's already done. That's what I did. I had my surgery, didn't tell my family, showed up like a couple months later to their house and was just like, oh yeah, by the way, this happened. And speaking of friends, I would also recommend bringing somebody to your appointments if possible, a friend, a cousin, a sister, a mom, whoever you feel comfortable, you know, being there, a partner with you. I think is really important. I know I'm not that's not possible for everyone and maybe not every appointment, but like the first consultation. I went to two consultations and I I one of them ended up being my surgeon who I liked. But my mom was with me for every single consultation and appointment and I think it really helps having someone with you because it help advocate for you even if they're they're just sitting in the chair the whole time. It's, you know, when you're sitting there usually, you know, with your topless in like this gown and they're like drawing lines on your chest and they're like, oh, what size do you want to be? I think you should be this size. And it's hard to speak up for yourself and be like, actually, I want to be this size. And, and it, it's just kind of a weird, vulnerable place to be. I think having someone who you feel supported by and safe with knows you really well because there'd be times where the doctor would say something and I'd be like, um, yeah, okay, I guess that sounds fine. And then my mom would be like, or would you rather do this? And then I would be like, um, actually, yeah, I would rather do that. You know, that kind of thing. I think it's very, very, very helpful to have that support there with you. This is not the time to be shy. This isn't the time to be afraid to voice your opinion and what you want. I'm always worried about hurting someone's, like hurting a professional's feelings by being like, hey, I don't want that. You know, like they would be like, oh, we think you should be this size. You don't want to feel like you're disrespecting them or hurting their feelings by being like, actually, no, I don't want that and I want this. You're not gonna hurt their feelings. This is their job. And if they make you feel bad for insisting on something different, then Either they're not the doctor for you. You can switch doctors if someone's making you feel bad. Okay. <sighs> Me and my mom did a lot of research on the internet, finding different doctors, reviews, did, made a lot of calls. We ended up finding a doctor that I really liked about like an hour from where I was living, um, which was a bit of a drive, but it was worth it for a really good doctor who I feel, or a surgeon who I feel like I trusted. So I was lucky that I found my doctor pretty quickly, but obviously that doesn't always happen for everyone. Now keep in mind, um, you will have to probably take your top off at every single one and just have your boobies out and have a, a strange doctor m moving them around and doing stuff with them, which is kind of weird. <laughs> That's another thing about having somebody there with you is it helps you not feel so creeped out. I'm in this room with these strangers and they're all looking at my titties. So some things I found out in my own research is there's different kinds of incisions that you can get 
that give a different look, different scars. And it also depends, again, on the doctor, on the size of your breast, the kind of tissue you have. There's a lot of factors. There's three different kinds. Yeah, three basic kinds of incisions. Um, and I'll insert a picture somewhere in here of the different kinds. She got beautiful boobies. Anchor is what I have, or what I had. And it's where, this is your boob. There we go. Oh, you can't see that, there we go. And then your nip is right here. So basically, they cut under your boob, and then they cut straight up, and then they cut around your nip, like that. So it's kind of like an anchor shape. And then the donut is obviously where they just cut out, like around the areola, and then glue that sucker back on. They glued my nipples back on. Did you know you could glue your nipples back on? And then lollipop is where there's no undercut and it just goes straight up and then around there. So those are like the three basic. So a lot of times the consultations for me would go like this, where I would come in, they would usually weigh me, take some vitals, and um, then I would go behind a curtain, put on a gown, kept my, my bottoms on, and then a lot of times it would just be checking in to see what I think and they would do things like take like a tape measure and like measure down to here and to here and across and like all these different little things and then we would take before pictures that was something we did where i had to like go in this little room and then they have like a big camera and basically you just stand there and take pics of your boobs while i'm on the topic of photos when they took my pictures and then after the surgery they took the after pictures and they asked if it was okay if I signed off on them using my pictures in my before and after without my face. They said it was no pressure, I didn't have to, but um, I signed off on it and I said it was okay. Sometimes I feel kind of weird about it because I'm like, oh, there's pics of my before and afters floating around somewhere. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. Um, something which probably is just basic duh knowledge, but I didn't really think about it is you have to obviously take all your piercings out before the surgery, like the day of the surgery. I had my nipples pierced, so obviously those had to go. Um, and they were like, oh yeah, you can put them back in after the surgery, but everything is so swollen and crusty and weird after the surgery. There was no way I was putting them back in. But I did take my nose ring out and you can get like a plastic, um, they call it like a retainer that you can like put in so the hole doesn't close up. Also, very important, they knew about all my allergies. You know, you fill out a lot of paperwork before these kind of things. I didn't know they have hypoallergenic stitches. Like, I am very sensitive to a lot, a lot of things. And so I just got whatever kind of stitches they usually give. Basically, my body rejected the stitches. Um, not fun. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll get into that more in the, in the post-op part. But basically, they weren't dissolving and they were poking out of my body. I had to go drive an hour like every week for the first like few months to go get them like pulled and cut out. So let's get into some operation day funness. I had said when they asked me what size I wanted to be, I wanted to be a B or a C. I wanted to be more towards a B. Now I am a little bigger than I I think I wanted, but I'm fully happy with it. I have no problems with my size. I wear like a bigger B or like a smaller C basically. It's like what size I am now. And from like where I was, that's teeny tiny. What your boobs are like now, they're going to be like that, but smaller. Like it's not a, a lifting, a reshaping procedure. It's just a reduction, like literally, like I, I have pretty, not like saggy boobs, but like, you know, they, they're a little, they're a little droopy. My surgery was scheduled at 8 a.m. So it took about 45 minutes to do all that. And then I kissed my mama goodbye. And we, we, we walked on off. I also should mention, I wasn't in a hospital. This was just like a, I don't know if they call it outpatient, inpatient. It was just like an office where, you know, they have like, you know, medical stuff. It was fully legitimate. <laughs> this wasn't like just like an off, like a cubicle. I just had my little IV pole and me and my nurse walked to 
the operation room. There's like bright, bright lights. I had to lay down on this table and they put little stickers, I guess like EKG, is that the word? And then they put my legs in these compression things that I think help like pump your blood, like help through your body or something. So it was like these little blow up things that were like on my legs and they were doing like this. And then they put like a heated blanket on me, which felt wow, amazing. And so like I'm laying there and there's like these giant bright lights on me and I'm like looking up at all the nurses and I got this like this goofy juice running through my veins. And I, can't rem I honestly can't remember if they put a mask on my face. A huge, huge fear of mine was that I was gonna wake up during the surgery because I know that happens where people, the anesthesia wears off or something happens and people just like wake up mid-surgery. That was my biggest fear or that I was gonna have like a nightmare that I was like dying or I would be scared to like as I was falling asleep or drifting off that I was going to be like no 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 like have like, like a breakdown whatever they put in that IV was amazing I was so calm I was in surgery for four hours the next thing I remember was waking up in the recovery room which is just like a room with like a big armchair in it and I just was like um when do I go in and the nurse is like sweetie it's over and I was like what? The nurse helped me get dressed, and then my mom came in, and they sent my ass home. Tittyless. Well, less titties. So I went home. A lot of the post-op details are a little foggy for me, as you can imagine. I don't remember most of the recovery. I was on a lot of painkillers and muscle relaxers. Like They gave me a compression bra to wear, and I still have it. This is... My compression bra. You know, you put it on like a little vest. So I had to wear that for the first, I don't know if it was six weeks. Because I was oozing, I also had to wear these little things. This is an extra one I had for my surgery. And then you take these pads and they would out of the packaging, obviously. And they were just like shoved under here, collecting all my ooze. Healing sucks you don't realize how many muscles you have all in this area until all of them hurt i basically had no energy to exert three or more weeks i would need help going to the bathroom and then that was all the energy i had and then i had to lay down and like pass out it's hard it, it starts to make you very sad like anytime you're like stuck on bed rest. Um, it's nice when friends can come visit you, understanding that you can't really go anywhere, or do anything, but just maybe sit there with you for, for the first week or two. I think it's really, really important to have somebody there to help take care of you. You can barely lift your arms. Like I had to, once I had my, I don't remember when my follow-up consultation was. Every time I would go in, they would make me raise my arms, which, does not feel good but you have to do it to like stretch your muscles and stretch the skin and get it used to like doing this again some people get drains which is when they cut little little holes and they put tubes in with these little things on the ends that drain the fluid blood some doctors give those some doctors don't mine didn't the fluid after the surgery was weird like I could press on this side of my chest and it would be like like I could like push the fluid in between I would move and I could hear it just like sloshing around my chest nobody told me that <laughs> and right after your surgery your boobs are high up and they're hard and they they just look nasty it, everything's sore but it doesn't hurt her it's very numb like there's a lot of loss of sensation right after that was another thing i was scared about before the surgery was losing sensation because some people their nerves don't reconnect after the surgery a little loss of sensation i have is on that that up scar everything else i have full sensation full feeling let's talk about scar tissue now i had not more but Different than the average person because of my stitches rejecting. Like she would have to like go in with like tweezers and like 
pick at the skin and that left me with like little hard pieces of scar tissue but definitely for the first couple years honestly like your scars are gonna be pretty pink pretty noticeable obviously depends on your skin tone and they'll try to sell you some expensive cream or oil for your scars or whatever I don't buy it so the best thing I found to do for scars especially little hard pieces of them was to basically like roll it like with like a decent amount of pressure and just kind of try to break up that scar tissue that I found really helped so you're probably wondering what a great story Jen what was the cost of all of that well procedure fee was eight thousand dollars anesthesia fees were about twelve hundred facility fees were about eighteen hundred so altogether it was about eleven grand and when you go through insurance I know it has to be a legitimate medical reason like oh it's because your back hurts your neck hurts or I never really felt like I had pain specifically from my boobs I just wanted it because I felt I felt very foreign and alien in my own body when I had them I also had there was a way where they could take my breast tissue from this surgery and just test it for breast cancer cells different things and that was about $150 to have that test ran I'm gonna try to show you what my scars look like without this video getting flagged. I'm obviously not going to show you my female presenting nipples. This is, you can see, I have a little bit of puckering here and like right here. You can really see the scar. But you can see that it has no color. It's just like a texture thing. Y'all better thumbs up this video for me putting my under boob on the internet, okay? <laughs> I'm so grateful that I was able to have the opportunity to have it. I've never regretted it. Just really, really life-changing. Yeah, so that's the story of my breast reduction. So if there's anything I didn't answer or any questions you have, just leave a comment down below. So I hope this was informative. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but I was really trying to cram as much information as I could remember and find. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want and have a good day. Okay, bye guys!